Tonight is the night. Hours from now. 3 I slash A T L A S. The strange, emerald glowing interstellar visitor that's kept astronomers awake for months will sweep past Mars. What happens in the next few hours will change how we talk about comets, interstellar visitors, and maybe even our place in the cosmos. This is not a rehearsal. This is the moment the data either proves a dozen uneasy suspicions or forces us to fold them back into the safe, familiar story of rocks and ice. For anyone who has followed the thread from discovery to now, the details are already unnerving. 3. I slash ATLAS wasn't found the way most comets are. A quiet detection followed by predictable behavior. From the beginning, it pulsed. Sudden rises and falls in brightness well beyond what the sun's heating should cause. Its spectrum has been dominated by carbon dioxide where most comets show water first. Photometry teams kept spotting large, slow-moving dust grains and bursts of light that looked far more like controlled thruster firings than random jets of escaping gas. And then there was the color, an odd emerald halo that stubbornly refused to line up with any common cometary chemistry. Taken together, these things formed a pattern that made some researchers whisper words they usually avoid, engineered probe reconnaissance. Now, with Mars squarely in its path, those whispers have to be tested. Earth is about to lose line of sight. For a window measured in days, our planet will be blind to the comet's closest approach. That means the only unblinking eyes in the system are the robots circling the red planet and the handful of solar observatories that can look near the sun. Mars Express, M-A-V-E-N-T-G-O, and other orbiters have been tasked with high cadence monitoring. Rovers on the surface, if weather and bandwidth allow, will be set to listen and log any sudden changes in local dust, light, and charged particle flux. Those instruments are the single set of witnesses we have, and tonight their telemetry will matter more than any headline. There's a tendency in astronomy to reduce surprises into routines, to assume data will submit to known physics once instruments have done their job. That hope still exists. The mainstream explanation that many mission scientists favor is simple and familiar. 3. I slash ATLAS is an interstellar comet with an unusual composition, born in a cold, distant system that left it rich in carbon dioxide and heavier grains. Subsurface pockets of volatile ices could blow open unpredictably. Strange tail geometries might be the result of heavy dust interacting with solar wind and magnetic fields in ways our models do not yet fully capture. Those are plausible mechanisms, and scientists are right to exhaust them first. But plausibility is not proof. There are three features that keep people up at night. First, the timing and geometry. This object's approach hugs the plane of the planets much more closely than most interstellar visitors. A corridor-like flight path that has the handprint of purpose. Second, the pulsed brightness. Instead of a smooth, heat-driven increase, the object has been breathing, on and off, in regularish intervals in a way that correlates with sudden micro-accelerations detected across independent astrometric datasets. Third, the composition oddities. High ratios of CO2 to water and occasional spikes of unexpected metals have been recorded by more than one facility. Any one of these alone could be explained. Together, they make a case that's simply hard to ignore. Tonight, scientists will look for three things above all. One, fragmentation. If 3I slash ATLAS breaks up as it feels the sun's heat, the pattern of fragments tells us what's inside. A disaster break into many small pieces suggests a fragile, porous nucleus. The sudden release of gas and dust in a massive flare would imply volatile, rich reservoirs. Two, sudden shifts in trajectory. If the path changes by more than predicted after a flare or 
or a fragment, that could mean asymmetric mass loss or, if you follow the more extreme reading, some internal force at work. 3. Unexpected spectral lines. If orbiters pick up radiation or particle signatures that cannot be explained by sublimating ices, that will force the community to reframe conclusions fast. Mars is more than a camera platform tonight. Its thin atmosphere, patchy remnant magnetism, and orbiting hardware make it a laboratory for comet-planet interactions. If a fragment grazes the upper atmosphere, it will deposit material that could seed temporary auroras, ionospheric disturbances, or localized changes that the trace gas orbiter and MAVEN can register. Those signals arrive with a latency. Relays, bandwidth, and solar interference will delay data, but even delayed readings will carry fingerprints, isotopic ratios, high-energy particle counts, and dust grain compositions that could be decisive. Scientists have been rehearsing contingency data routes for weeks. Tonight, they'll finally use them. There are also darker, slower problems to consider. The risk of contamination is not obvious at first glance, but it matters. If 3i slash ATLAS carries complex organic molecules, not just simple ices, but chains of carbon compounds or pseudobiological structures, bits of that material could settle onto Mars. Future biosignature searches must then separate Martian chemistry from interstellar hitchhikers. The practical answer is careful documentation, time-stamped particle captures, chorused spectroscopy from orbit and surface, and rigorous chain of custody for every odd reading. The moral answer is more complicated. Whether to treat sudden discoveries as global data or national assets has already caused quiet fights in mission control. The practical day-to-day -day choreography behind the scenes is human and tense. Teams have swapped shifts into nocturnes. Engineers test data cues until servers hum. Amateur networks, the same citizen scientists who first flagged other odd visitors in the past, have prepared scripts that auto-upload raw frames and photometry the moment they spot a change. In several forums, trained volunteers stand ready to triangulate a flash and alert professional teams. It's an ecosystem of curiosity and caution. If something dramatic happens, the first useful signal may come from a backyard array in the Southern Hemisphere, not from a government lab. What could go wrong? Consider three scenarios. In the first, the conservative case, 3i slash ATLAS behaves like a weird comet. It flares, ejects dust, perhaps sheds a few small fragments, and survives perihelion only to fade as it heads back into interstellar space. Analysis later reveals odd chemistry, but nothing impossible. That would still be a major scientific goldmine, a new chapter in comet chemistry and physics. In the second scenario, fragmentation is severe. Large fragments form a temporary debris field in Mars's neighborhood. Orbiters and surface assets suffer increased micrometeoroid flux. One or two sensitive instruments might be damaged. In the third, most unnerving scenario, the object shows behavior inconsistent with natural expectations, synchronized pulses with matching micro-accelerations, emissions in energy bands not attributable to sublimation, or coherent structures in the debris. If any of that appears, the community will have to seriously broaden its hypotheses. The word engineered would move from whisper to checklist item. Not because it's the preferred answer, but because science must follow evidence wherever it leads. Even as we balance possibilities, we must keep the tone of today's observations disciplined. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary data, and the instruments we trust are being pointed, recalibrated, and ready to collect exactly that kind of data. The James Webb Space Telescope and Hubble have already taken their last pre-conjunction looks. 
ground arrays and radio telescopes will keep listening as long as Earth's geometry allows. But the single place where most decisive signals will originate and where we must trust the integrity of delayed telemetry is Mars. For the public, the feeling tonight will be a strange mix. Wonder at a green visitor so bright it changes the night, and unease that our planet is momentarily blind. The temptation to dramatize is strong. Alien probes, cosmic messages, cover-ups. Resist the urge to jump to the wildest storylines until the instruments have had their say. At the same time, don't underplay the suspense. We are at an inflection point. If 3 I slash ATLAS survives and behaves like nothing we've seen, then the scientific conversation will expand overnight. If it fragments or leaves a measurable trace on Mars, then long-term studies of interstellar material will get a front row seat. Either way, the result will be a richer, stranger record of the solar system's interactions with the galaxy. Amateur photometry channels. Unexpected brightness spikes are often visible before the spectrometers have time to react. Third, radio arrays. The comet's interaction with Mars's ionosphere may produce distinctive radio signatures that hint at charged particle flows. Finally, when delayed spectra arrive, look for anomalous isotopic ratios and metallic lines that refuse to be shoehorned into ordinary comet models. At the heart of tonight lies a simple scientific discipline, transparency plus redundancy, multiple instruments, independent teams, and open release of raw data reduce the chance that a freak calibration error gets mistaken for a cosmic message. The best science is the kind that survives skeptical scrutiny, and tonight the world will test that principle under pressure. When the sun rises over our news cycles tomorrow, we will be reading a new kind of morning. Either the cool, careful analysis of the comet that taught us new chemistry, or headlines that force the language of mission planners and philosophers alike. Either outcome is valuable. Either outcome is a victory for curiosity. So look up, not for answers, but for questions. Watch the official channels, follow the amateur networks, and when the first Martian telemetry packets arrive, read them with both wonder and caution. Tonight is small, in absolute scale, a single comet, a single flyby, but the implications could be enormous. We're about to learn whether a visitor from the stars behaves like a stranger or like a neighbor. Either way, the universe has decided to make its point. It still holds surprises, and the best of science will be ready to learn from them. 